Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. I'm pleased to welcome my next guest, the mayor of Oregon's fourth largest city, Gresham Mayor Shane Bemis. Mayor, welcome back to Straight Talk. It's nice to have you here. Thank you, Laurel. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You are getting a lot of national attention for something people might not expect, how Gresham is turning waste into energy. And you just got back from a national mayor's summit on energy right. where you were invited to talk about Gresham's waste treatment plant. Right. What's the big deal? Why is it getting so much attention? Well, if you would have told me when I started my political career that I'd be running around the country talking about taking poop to power, <laughs> I'd have told you you're crazy. But, you know, we, we set out um, about 10 years ago, our wastewater treatment plant was our largest energy user. And we, you know, tried to figure out a way that we could reduce the energy cost and therefore save ratepayers money and, um, and make some good climate, you know, um, decisions along the way. Um, the beautiful part about what we've done with wastewater treatment plant is we took it from the largest energy user to now it produces, it's net zero, it even produces more energy than it uses. And the thing, that why I went um, to talk about that nationally is because it can be replicated anywhere in the United States and it really has made a great impact on not only, we call it the, all the right shades of green, so it was the, the right shades of green for the environment and it saved money which saved our ratepayers over a million dollars a year. The important piece about that is we're not using 30 year old talking points on climate on that. We're talking about practicality and return on investment and what that means. And so when we talk to our business community about investing in clean energy or um, how, to, how to get after some of the climate actions, we talk about return on investment. Because you're really shifting the conversation away from the sort of yeah. polarizing argument about climate change. Exactly, if people haven't gotten there on the moral grounds of, of climate, and I believe the science, there's no question about it, but um, we can talk to, I can talk to that same person about saving money and and a return on investment and they'll make a climate action and a climate decision um, and without even knowing it. And that's, I think, one of the beautiful parts about being a mayor right now is it's just practical. You can talk in practical terms. You're really bullish on Gresham, which is natural. You're yeah. the mayor, but, but some numbers and indicators yeah. show that you have reason. There's proof that you have reason to be proud. Let's talk about the economy. What's yeah. happening with the economy in Gresham? Well, we've seen, you know, we um, had some of the largest state certified industrial land uh, in, the, in the Portland metropolitan region. We've had great partners working with us in the Port of Portland. Uh, our economic development team, uh, Subaru, uh, came to Gresham, their North American plant. Um, which did a you know worldwide search, um, so that was great news. Our small businesses are humming like never before, and our downtown, our downtown is busier than it's ever been. I heard it's hard to find a place to park now, which is that, a good that's thing. That's true. That's a good thing. And most little downtowns will tell you that, but usually uh, it's their employees parking in front of them. But now it's not. It's actual. You know, try and find a place uh, at lunchtime or at dinner time. So. Some growing pains with that, but it's healthy and it's good. Uh, um, our uh, commercial permits are up over 60% over two over a five-year combined period. So people are, are, are recognizing and coming to invest in Gresham. And we're looking at a picture here of the, the candy shop we just saw downtown. Yeah. Uh, people lined up out the door. Well, you know, I thought it was fascinating when uh, Vice President Biden was in town and it was in Northwest and was at Salt and Straw and the line's always out the door. and was coming home picking my son up from uh, football practice and we went by the candy store and they were lined out the door for ice cream. So I threw it up on Facebook and said, hey, look at this. This isn't Northwest, this is downtown Gresham. Come check us out, so. People watching might say, oh, that's great, but doesn't Gresham have a really bad crime problem? I think people yeah. have that impression about Gresham, yeah. but the numbers are down, aren't they? The numbers are down. Uh, crime is down um, almost 17% over the, um, the the last two years, which is good indicators. You know, we had, um, we had a rough patch there when, they, when the economy and, and the recession hit, you know, um, poverty was being pushed at us at a rapid pace. Um, our suburban city never dealt with things like homelessness or poverty. And so we had to take some time to figure out, you know, how are we going to respond to the early intervention piece, which we focused a lot, had a lot of partners with Boys and Girls Club, Friends of the Children, uh, Rosemary Anderson High School, and started bringing in the social dollars to follow um, where the poverty was going. We were, we were making great um, headway on that. So, you know, still got uh, a long ways to go, but it's interesting that um, uh, people's perception of, of Gresham sometimes is from a lot of being told by a lot of people that don't know anything about us. Um, you head down to our main street, um, you head uh, down to uh, Mount Hood Community College, you're going to see a community that comes together and is proud of who they are. Have we had some bumps? Absolutely. Uh, I started my political career working on crime issues. It's been a passion of mine uh, for a long time. We hired 
uh, director of 21st century policing, which is completely out of the box. We have more data available to us than we've ever had as a municipality. How do we use that data to start to use other disciplines other than just the police department to get after crime? Uh, you know, we've had to be very resourceful in how we do that. We have one of the lowest municipal property tax rates of any city in the state and we share a border with a city that has one of the largest so um, our ability to respond to some of some of these issues has been limited but our citizens have stepped forward and helped out in many different ways from reading to small kids to uh, being a citizen volunteer in policing to volunteering to be a park ranger so we're making headway. We've got some. We've got some ways to go, though. All that's encouraging on on the local level, mm -hmm. but there were some national events that really impacted you in in a big way. The white supremacist mm -hmm. rally last month in Charlottesville, Virginia, yeah. that triggered violence and the death of a counter protester when a car plowed into the crowd, and then the president's reaction and response afterwards yeah. really affected you. How did that? move you to action? Well, I, you know, we have a lot of diversity in Gresham. 30% 30, 30 of our population has come from an, an, another country or foreign born since the year 2000. I wanted to make it very clear. I thought that there was ambiguity out of the White House. I didn't think that there was um, moral clarity of what was going on. I wanted to make it very clear to the people that I represent, uh, the people that my kids go to school with, um, that there is no ambiguity here at City Hall. Hate is not a value that we have in Gresham, and we're not going to stand for it. And we came together and um, signed the uh, Mayor's Compact Against Hate, which very definitively said we, you know, we do not believe in white supremacy, um, and, and, and other tenets of it too. The region's mayors here um, signed on to that as well, uh, which was a national movement. So, and you created a bumper sticker too. Yeah, we put hate is not a Gresham value on all of our police cars, our um, uh, municipal vehicles uh, we thought it was really important to make a definitive statement to our community that, that there's just there's just no ambiguity from us at City Hall so it sounds like you were disappointed in the president's response you, you're a moderate Republican you haven't been a huge fan of President Trump from the no. very beginning how has the political climate had an impact on your personal call to service yeah I think it motivates me in a way that it never has um, the beautiful part about being mayor of your hometown is that you, you don't get to send a mean tweet to somebody. You're going to see that person at the coffee shop the next day or you're going to see them at the grocery store. You have to find ways to have civility. You have to find ways to be practical and you have to govern. And, and the only way you can govern and be, uh, uh, and be effective is to bring people together. And, and that's one of the great things I love about Gresham. Our residents, they have very strong opinions, but we include them and, and we formulate and we come up with things and policies that move the community forward together. You've always told me when you've been on the show before that you're completely happy being the mayor of Gresham. Yeah. You've been the mayor for 11 years, but I understand there are people that are asking you to consider an independent run for governor in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, Kate Brown is expected to run as a Democrat. Newt Bueller sort of the front runner right now on the mm -hmm. GOP side. Any chance you'll run for governor as an independent? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think just exactly what we talked about with the with the political parties. Um, you know, the, both parties have a lot to learn from this last election. Uh, the the you know the Democrats um, you know can't just talk to uh, only the college educated and the liberal elite. Meanwhile, belittling people in rural Oregon that are facing huge economic problems and community decline all the way around. The Republicans, on the other hand, have to figure out how to how to govern and what do they stand for. This Republican Party, the current Republican Party, is not the party of diplomacy that George H.W. Bush had when he brought the world together to liberate Kuwait. It's not the optimistic party that Ronald Reagan talked about, and it's certainly not the moral uh, party that Abraham Lincoln uh, governed over. So I don't currently recognize this current Republican Party. So it intrigues me. The challenge with that is there's a lot of vested interests on both sides, you know, and so the money to, to run a campaign uh, becomes somewhat difficult. But I think that Oregonians are ready for practicality. These issues that we're facing with homelessness, um, with uh, crime, with the opiate uh, 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 epidemic, with the economy, they're not Republican and Democrat issues. They are. They will require all of us to be engaged. Let me ask you, what are the chances? We only have about a minute left, but the chances, if you had to put a percentage on it, that you would run? 50-50? Um, um, 
Possibly. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm really interested. I think with Governor Brown, you're going to get more of the same. Um, I'm interested to see where Representative Bueller goes with his campaign. Um, again, the challenge is the funding piece of it. Let, let me just jump in here because we only have like 30 seconds. Yeah. I really know you want to get the Hogan Butte Nature Park Absolutely. that opens um, this weekend. Tell yes. us quickly in 30 so, seconds. So this about was that. the number one piece of property and trust for public land. We acquired it about uh, somewhere around 15 years ago. Uh, it is a beautiful park that has views of the Columbia River Gorge, all of the mountains, Gresham, Portland. Um, we've been working on it a long time. We're going to open it this weekend, and it's absolutely a stunning, beautiful park. A few seconds, a, a gem, really, I've heard, absolutely. for Oregon. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, everybody yeah. can show up this weekend. Yeah, every, and everybody hike can it. show up, that's right. And it's, uh, it really is a great place for our young families to go. We're getting younger and younger. Young families are moving to Gresham, and we are laser focused on our children and families right now. Mayor Bemis from Gresham, thank you for joining us here thank on you Straight all. Talk. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk. Have a great week.